Hello. Welcome to JXJ Aviation. Today we will look at, how does an aircraft's, jet engine start? First, let's see when is an engine started, during normal day-to-day -day operations. The engines are normally started, during pushback, or before the aircraft starts taxiing to the runway, for takeoff. This initiates the engine start sequence, which takes approximately, 2 to 3 minutes, for each engine. In this video, we will consider a commercial aircraft, installed with turbofan engines. First let's see, how is the engine started. For starting the engine, switches are provided in the cockpit. The first step is, set the mode selector switch, to the start position. Then there is an engine master switch, that should be set to on. This initiates the start cycle, of the engine. Now we will look at, how does the jet engine start. But to understand the start process, we need to look at, the components of the jet engine. First, let's break down the jet engine, into its different components. This is the low pressure shaft. It consists of, the fan, the low pressure compressor, and the low pressure turbine. This shaft is also called as the N1 shaft, or LP shaft. Next we have the high pressure shaft. This consists of, the high pressure compressor, and the high pressure turbine. This shaft is also called as the N2 shaft, or the HP shaft. Between the compressor and the turbine sections, we have the combustor. This consists of fuel nozzles, igniters, and the combustion chamber. At the exit section of the engine, we have the nozzle. This section of the engine, is called as the core of the engine. This is the engine's cowl, or the outer covering for the engine. This is called as the bypass section, for the fan air stream. For starting the engine, the first requirement is, a source of high pressure air. This air may be taken from, the auxiliary power unit, or APU, a ground high pressure air cart, or from the other engine, if it is already running. The flow of high pressure air, is controlled by a start valve. The start valve opens, based on inputs from the cockpit. After the start valve, the high pressure air is sent to the accessory gearbox, or AGB. This accessory gearbox, is usually located near the bottom of the engine, within the engine's cowl. The accessory gearbox, houses different pumps, and a air starter unit. This unit, consists of a turbine, which is linked to a shaft. This shaft from the air starter unit, is connected to the N2 shaft, or the high pressure shaft. When the high pressure air, starts flowing through the ducts, to the accessory gearbox, the turbine in the air starter unit, starts to rotate. This causes the air starter unit's shaft, to rotate. Since it is connected to the N2 shaft, the N2 shaft also begins to rotate. As the N2 shaft rotates, the igniters come on, inside the combustor. The fuel is then introduced, through the fuel nozzles, to create a fuel-air mixture. This causes the N2 shaft's, rotation speed to increase further.
slowly, the N1 shaft, or the low pressure shaft, starts to rotate. The fan, which is connected to the N1 shaft, also starts to rotate, which will result in suction of more air, into the engine. This means the rotation speeds of N1, and N2, will increase further. At a certain N2 speed, the ignition is cut off, since the flame becomes self-sustaining. As the N2 speed increases further, the shaft from the air starter unit, disengages from the N2 shaft. Now the start valve can be closed, since high pressure air, is no longer required, in the air starter unit. The start sequence of the engine, is now complete. The engine can now produce sufficient thrust, by adjusting the fuel flow in the combustor. The aircraft can now, taxi to the runway, and then take off. Thank you for watching, if you like the video, do subscribe for more videos.